<laughs> Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get into that, you know what I have to do. I have to thank you for coming here. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for the wonderful comments that you write. Thank you for all the songs that you request. Thank you for being the best viewers in the world. Today I have several items for you. This is the first one, and it's an interesting one. The title of the, the article is A Deep Dive into the Opioid Crisis. This is written by a man named Matt Bivens, who is a, a doctor, a medical doctor, but w at one time was a journalist. And uh, I, I learned something from him that I did not know. So I'm going to read you just a little bit here that I've highlighted. As a medical student, I was once told by my, my attending physician that people treated with morphine for pain don't get addicted. Surprised, I asked, but what about all the Civil War veterans? When the U.S. Civil War ended in 1865, both sides demobilized a weary horde of chronically ill and wounded. Some soldiers had contracted tuber tuberculosis or a lingering pneumonia in the days before antibiotics. Others had suffered field amputations with handheld saws. But whether the question was chronic coughing or terrible pain, the answer was morphine. The newly invented hypodermic needle allowed for fast-acting injections. Veterans everywhere got hooked to the point where addiction was called the soldier's disease. Soon, morphine moved beyond the battlefield and was in use for everything from menstrual cramps to teething. <laughs> but you know what happened? They came up with a new drug invented by Bayer. And you're not going to believe what the name of this drug was. It was called heroin. Heroin is a drug that was invented by Bayer. And heroin replaced morphine because they were absolutely certain <laughs> that it was not addictive. And here we are back in the same old place that we've always been. It's a fascinating read. It's the first in a series that he's going to write about heroin and fentanyl. And the things that we learn that the medical profession has been doing that you just shake your head and say, what were they thinking? The next article I have is new documents reveal details of coordination between Fauci and other supporters of controversial gain-of-function coronavirus research in China. Absolutely. Oh boy. <laughs> you, you can't, I can't. I just, I really have trouble with this. I really, really have trouble with it. This is not how it's supposed to work in our country. It's not how it's supposed to work in any country. According to Empower Oversight, the National Institutes of Health resisted transparency and delayed releasing documents on the research, the subsequent spread of the disease, the role of the National Institutes of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and failures to properly oversee EcoHealth Alliance. <clears throat> Since 2021, Empower Oversight has been seeking records. Since 2021, that's three years, seeking records related to COVID-19 from the National Institutes of Health to shed light on what the NIH knew about the American taxpayer paid research done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. NIH resisted transparency and delayed releasing documents on the research the subsequent spread of the disease, the role of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, and failures to properly oversee EcoHealth Alliance. Empower Oversight has now released documents that the NIH recently produced on the grant to WIV, that's the Wuhan Institute of Virology, through EcoHealth Alliance pursuant to Empower Oversight's January 5, 2022, 
and February 6, 2023 FOIA requests. This irks me especially because my father worked for NIH. He spent his the major part of his career at NIH and I know my father would be so angry to hear this. Just fear and furious. He would be furious that the agency that he worked for and gave his life to his career to is hiding documents, trying to conceal what they've been doing. It's just unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable. The next thing I have is a, a Prager video, and this one I'm not going to show you, but you would probably, you might be interested in watching it. It's a story about a lawyer who sues terrorists, and when she wins their ca her cases, their bank accounts get seized or locked up so that they don't have access to them. And so <clears throat> it's an interesting way to attack the problem, but maybe, you know, if you, if you think about it, uh, the way that uh, the FBI broke the mobsters of old, you know, Al Capones and those guys, it wasn't by catching them committing crimes. It was by tax evasion. And so it's interesting to see a lawyer who's taking an entirely different approach and saying, you know what, I think I can stop terrorism by simply taking all their money away. <laughs> What a novel idea, and what a great idea. And the last article that I have <clears throat> is another one that just irritates me to no end. Unredactions reveal early White House involvement in the Trump documents case. This is the case, if you can recall, in Florida, where they're trying to uh, charge Trump with felonies for having taken uh, classified materials to his Mar-a-Lago estate. Top Biden administration fail, officials worked with the National Archives to develop special counsel Jack Smith's case against Donald Trump involving the former president's alleged mishandling of classified material, according to recently unsealed court documents in the case pending in southern Florida. More than 300 pages of newly unredacted exhibits containing emails and other correspondence related to the early stages of the hunt for presidential papers, challenged public statements by Joe Biden about what he knew and when he knew it regarding the case against his political rival. As we have, as we have seen in other cases against Trump, the White House's fingers are on every one of those cases. You know, we live in really unusual and strange times. I have no doubt in my mind that we've had we've had corruption in America for a long time. No doubt whatsoever. But it has risen to a new level where they're not afraid to exercise it in the most egregious manners. And they clearly don't think that anything's going to happen to them. And looking at it, it's hard to say that anything would. The Department of Justice isn't going to go after these people. They're a part of it. So how do we find justice? How do we get our country back? How do we get rid of all this corruption? I don't know. Other than a miracle from God, I don't know. I really don't know. That's the news for today. And as for you, my viewers, I pray for you that you will have an abundant life, that you'll live a long time, that you'll be healthy, and that God will keep you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do that same thing for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you, my viewers, will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.